Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to light. And now we have to go to the grave together. How many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? One of the most important lessons in life is to remember to have an attitude of gratitude, of humility. Understand where the gift comes from. It's not mine. It's been given to me by the grace of God. Use what I have. Use what you have to help others. You know, on your last day, you can't take it with you, but you can leave it here. What my mother said to me was, Denzel, you do a lot of good. But you must do good the right way. She said, you know what I'm talking about. Can't buy your way in. Can't love your way in. You got to serve. You got to do good the right way. So at 66, getting ready to be 67, having just buried my mother, I made a promise to her and to God, not just to do good the right way, but to honor my mother and my father by the way I live my life, the rest of my days on this earth. I'm here to serve, to help, to provide. You know, the ego is interesting. You just don't know. But in every prayer, all I hear is feed my sheep. Put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. The world needs a lot, and we need it from you. We really do. We need it from you, the young people. Just remember this. So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because remember this. You will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it, and all they got was robbed. So the question is, what are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors. Some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists. Some of you have money. Some of you have patience. Some of you have kindness. Some of you have love. Some of you have the gift of long-suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is. What are you going to do with what you have? I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know, and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. To not only take risks, but to be open to life, to accept new views, and to be open to new opinions. And while it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you've got. 
And when you fall throughout life, and maybe even tonight, remember this, fall forward. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. Keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. I've been protected, I've been directed, I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. Number two, fail big. That's right. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can be, it can be very frightening. It, it's a new world out there. It's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances professionally. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots, and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment so have dream but have goals life goals yearly goals monthly goals daily goal I try to give myself a goal every day simple goals but have goals and understand in order to achieve your goals you must apply discipline which you have already done and consistency every day not just on Tuesday and miss a few days you have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You heard the saying, we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful.